The first type of genetic cross that you need to understand is a monohybrid cross. So a monohybrid cross is when you are dealing with the inheritance of only one trait. So that f trait might be flower color, it might be plant height, eye color, fur color, hair texture, whatever it is. But if it is just one trait, it is a monohybrid cross. Now there are three different monohybrid crosses that you can get in matric. The first one would be an example of complete dominance. So complete dominance is when you have a gene that is controlled by two alleles and one allele completely dominates over the other. So a reminder of what alleles are, they are alternate forms or versions of a gene that are found at the same locus on homologous chromosomes. So if this is a pair of homologous chromosomes and it contains the gene that controls height of a plant, one individual plant has two homologous chromosomes, one from each parent, but it might have a tall allele and a short allele. So they could possibly give the tall allele to their children or the short allele. We know that tall is dominant because we use a capital T and short is recessive, so we use a small t. For complete dominance, we always use the same letter. So we'll show it with a capital or uppercase T and a lowercase or small t to show dominance or recessive when it comes to alleles. So that's very key for complete dominance, that we use the same letter for both the dominant allele and the recessive allele. So let's look at an example of complete dominance using a monohybrid cross. When it comes to doing any genetics question in a matric paper, the key is to read the question exceptionally carefully. This is where you can be tripped up easily, but it's also where you can find vital clues to help you interpret the question and therefore do the genetic cross. So I always use a highlighter to try and gauge what information they're giving me. So sheep homozygous for white wool are crossed with sheep homozygous for black wool. So we've got contrasting characteristics. So all of the genetic crosses that we have are using contrasting characteristics. So black and white or tall and short, purple and white, for example. And these contrasting characteristics are either or. There is no alternate color that they can be. The sheep are either black or they are white. All the offspring produced from this cross of homozygous white wool and homozygous black wool are white. So that is our first very important clue. The fact that you have a white sheep crossed with a black sheep and you get white offspring, that tells you that white is the dominant color. Because you've got a homozygous white sheep breeding with a homozygous, meaning the alleles are the same, black sheep. So it's pure breeding white with pure breeding black and all of the offspring produced are white. That shows you that the offspring will be heterozygous, so they're going to have a white allele from the one parent and a black allele from the other, but still physically they appear white in the phenotype. So that means white is the dominant trait. So that is very, very important for us to determine the letters that we're going to use. So I'm already thinking ahead and saying, well, that homozygous white sheep, if white is dominant, I'm going to use a W. So this homozygous white sheep was probably a capital W, capital W. The homozygous black sheep was probably two small Ws. And the offspring will end up being heterozygous with a capital and a small W. Now if we read the part of the question, this is all just information they're giving us to help us understand the dominance here. They won't always necessarily tell you that white is dominant over black wool. So if a black sheep is crossed with a heterozygous white sheep, so now we're getting into the question here, with a heterozygous white sheep, what would the genotypic and phenotypic ratios of the offspring be? Okay, so that ratios part is very important. We need to make sure we answer it at the end. So in order for a sheep to have black wool, it needs to have two small Ws because as soon as there's a capital W involved, that capital W, due to Mendel's law of dominance, will mask the recessive W allele. So this capital will mask the recessive allele, which means that the sheep will appear white, even though it's got an allele for black fur. So in order to be a black sheep, you have to have a small w, small w. So you have to be homozygous recessive. So I'm just going to put my thinking in there. 
Now they tell you it's being crossed with a heterozygous white sheep. Heterozygous, hetero means different. So that means that it's going to have a capital W and a small w. So let's get into the actual genetic cross now. What I'm showing you here is just the template for doing a genetic cross. So whatever genetic cross you ever have to do, whether it is a dihybrid cross, one showing complete dominance, incomplete dominance, blood grouping, sex determination, that means you have to have P1 phenotype genotype at the top, meiosis, then the gametes, and fertilization in that order. Then you can have a Punnett square or you can show fertilization in another way. And you end off with the F1 genotype and the F1 phenotype. So the first step of a genetic cross is either determining your key or identifying your key if they have given it to you in the question. I determined that white, fur, white wool must be dominant because when that white sheep mated with a black sheep, all the offspring were white, which shows you that that, that, that is the dominant trait. Now, the phenotype is easy. The P1 phenotype, the parent phenotype, you simply read it from the question. You have a white-wooled sheep mating with a black-wooled sheep. So that is easy. That's the easy part. You're just reading carefully. Determining the genotype, on the other hand, is slightly more complex. So we look back at the question. You always double-check the question. You have a black sheep being mated with a heterozygous white sheep. Heterozygous, we don't include in the phenotype here because a heterozygous white sheep looks identical to a homozygous white sheep. The only reason they are saying heterozygous is so that you know that it is heterozygous when you do the genotype, so that you know whether it is going to be a capital W, capital W, or a heterozygous sheep, which would be a capital and a lowercase w. So just double checking in the question, we have a heterozygous white sheep mating with a black sheep. Now, that black sheep, again, remember, it's got two recessive alleles because otherwise it wouldn't have black wool. If it has one capital, that W, the capital W, will mask the recessive allele because this capital W is dominant and the white wool is dominant over the black wool. Then, meiosis happens inside this sheep. Now, because these are alleles on homologous chromosomes, this sheep, when the homologous chromosomes split during meiosis, the, homo the chromosomes in the gametes that are produced can either have an allele for white fur, if we check our key, or it can have an allele for black fur. So that's what we're doing with the gametes. Through meiosis, the, the genotypes essentially split up. And it's just saying what options are there in the gametes for that sheep to pass to his off offspring. So obviously the black wool sheep can only pass two small Ws or otherwise known as two black alleles. The next step shows fertilization because that's what happens to gametes. So with your Punnett square, you take the gametes of one parent and you put them on the top columns and you take the gametes of the other parents and you put them on the side rows because you can't have this gamete fertilizing that one. It's like having a sperm fertilizing a sperm. So you have to show that the capital W goes there and the small w there. And the other parent, you have the two small w's. So just to orientate you, those two gametes we put on the side and these two gametes are put on the top. It doesn't matter which way around they go. Now you show fertilization. So if this gamete were to fertilize that one, you will end up with offspring that have a capital W and a small w. Same for the lower one, capital W, small w. If these two were fertilizing each other, it would be lowercase w, lowercase w, and same for that last one. So what you're actually finding out in the Punnett square, what you have here is the F1 genotype. So you can write the F1 genotype, this sentence or phrase, just over there. But I'm going to rewrite it and just say you have two big W, small w, so heterozygous, to two homozygous, recessive. I say recessive because it's got the small w's. Please make a point of making your w's different sizes if that's the letter you have, or choose a letter that's more obvious that the uppercase and lowercase look different. But I try and make it that that is a capital W and that's very clearly a small w. Now the question asks for genotypic and phenotypic ratios. So what I have to do is simplify my ratio. You have to leave in the most simple form of saying one to one. So it's two heterozygous to two homozygous recessive. So at the end, that simplifies to one to one. 
phenotypically speaking, these two individuals have a dominant allele. So therefore, we refer to our key. And the dominant allele makes this individual have white wool. Whereas these two individuals that would be produced from the crossing do not have a dominant allele. They've got two small or recessive alleles, which means that they will have black wool. So when you have your phenotype being written down, you simply write the colors. There will be two individuals with white wool and two individuals with black wool, which then simplifies to a ratio of one to one. Because the question asked for phenotypic and genotypic ratios, you have to give it in this instance.